Hey guys, so I did a couple of videos on weapons and weapon roles and what you should look for and all that kind of stuff. But I've gotten a lot of requests about builds, how to set up a build, what should I look for in a basic build. So that's what I would like to explore today. Back in Season 8, I made a tutorial on Armor 2.0, setting up builds and all that. And while I think it's good, still, it just gave an example of how to make a build and not necessarily what is a good build. So we're going to explore that a bit more today and just go over some of the core components of basic builds and then how you can expand them to your liking. Before we dive into that though, I want to talk about stat rolls really quickly. High stat rolls are good, but they are not the end all be all of armor builds. If you have a 58 stat roll armor piece, but they're in stats that you actually want, I don't care how many stats you have on a different piece of armor, if they're all in stats that you don't want. I've gotten rid of plenty of 65 plus stat roll armor because 50 or more of those stats were in mobility and strength. And I don't want mobility and strength, so there's no point in keeping it. The only time I'd consider taking a less than ideal stat roll is if it is a significant amount of stats higher, at least 10 or more than what you have on that piece, or if changing that armor piece will push you into the next tier of multiple stats. I personally prioritize recovery as my main stat because it is the one stat that I can feel the most in moment-to-moment -moment gameplay when we're talking about resilience, mobility, and recovery, although mobility for hunters is very valued. But having a decent amount of recovery, in my opinion, is good for literally everyone. Intellect is valued very highly as well due to how much energy it costs compared to other stat mods. 10 intellect, aka 1 tier, is 5 energy per stat mod, while other mods are cheaper. 1 tier of recovery is 4 energy, while discipline, strength, mobility, and resilience are all 3 energy. Half tiers cost 2 for recovery and intellect, and everything else is 1. This means getting your intellect from gear is a better idea than from mods because you can mod in other stats for less energy. Otherwise, your stats should simply reflect your build. If your build focuses on grenade and melee usage, well, you go for discipline and strength. If you focus on dodging a lot as a hunter, then you go for mobility. Season 9 and 10 introduced the two core mechanics behind a lot of builds today, Charged with Light and Warmind Cell mods. While Charged with Light mods don't require a very specific weapon to be equipped, Warmind Cell mods require you to use Ikelos or Seventh Seraph weapons in order to trigger Warmind Cell generation, although you can destroy Warmind Cells to trigger their effect with any weapon. Just make sure that if you don't have any Warmind Cell mods equipped, that you don't shoot Warmind Cells, because they will do literally nothing, and the person making them will get really mad at you. However, getting these mods at the moment is pretty tough and random. The one place to get them is at the gunsmith, who sells one unique mod per day, and it might not even be one of those mods. Really hoping for a better system soon, because these mods are very important to gameplay, and not being able to reliably get them is kind of a bummer, even if it would be slow to get them somewhere else. If you don't have any, any of these mods at all, then your options are pretty limited as far as mod selection goes. You'll need to build based on your subclass, weapon, and exotic choices, with the exotic being the main driving force depending on the effect. Then you may have some options within the seasonal artifact, but otherwise, there's not a ton going on here. Certain exotics can work just fine without a very special build. Phoenix Cradle and Bottom Tree Sunbreaker comes to mind. Crown of Tempest and almost any Arc Tree works fine. But to branch out past these more basic builds, you need the mods or you need to use seasonal artifact mods. As you've probably guessed, this video will mainly be talking about Charged with Light and Warmind Cells. Before we continue, I just want to preface this section by saying that these mods are buggy sometimes. Most of them work. Sometimes certain mods in particular will not. I don't know when they'll be fixed, and it's impossible for me to account which mods are broken at any given moment, so this video is made with the assumption that everything is working as intended, even if at the moment you're watching this, they are not. So what do some very basic day-to-day -day builds using these mods look like? Basic in this case means a very generic build that would work with literally any combination of anything. We are looking to be as 
all-encompassing as possible, or we are just looking to set you up with a baseline so that you can experiment with some builds of your own. Exotics can now accept seasonal mods, which is awesome, because we don't need to sacrifice a mod slot for an exotic perk, or vice versa. The core that I use for a very generic charged with light build for activities that don't really have that much of a threat in them is taking charge and high energy fire. Taking charge gives you charged with light whenever you pick up an orb of power, which is quite common if you have a masterworked primary weapon. High energy fire boosts your damage as long as you have a charge, but it goes away whenever you kill something, and this damage boost is not very significant. This is one of the easiest combos in the game. It works with literally every loadout, every gun, every other mod choice. It is low maintenance, it works in the background, but it's not going to dramatically impact your gameplay experience either. If you want to take this very core build and scale it up, you might want to grab the supercharged and stacks on stacks mods, which will let you get up to four stacks of charge with light and will allow you to get two charges instead of one whenever you charge up. How about something with a little more defense in mind? Well, you're going to want protective light, which is only accessible on void armor. Protective light will trigger if you have charged with light stacks and if your shield breaks, giving you a massive 50% damage resistance buff for a duration based on how much charge you had. This is one of the few damage reduction effects in the game that I believe that you can actually feel and is incredibly good in higher tier content like Legend, Master, or GM content. For day-to-day -day stuff like the Strike playlist though, I really don't think this is that important. When doing a bit more difficult content, I would often grab multiple mods that gave me Charged with Light, specifically Taking Charge and Shield Break Charge. Shield Break Charge is great for any activities with match game, because you are able to farm charges from enemies by breaking their shield, waiting for it to regen, and then breaking it again. These three mods, Taking Charge, Shield Break Charge, and Protective Light, were at my core while I filled up the rest based on the loadout that I was using or the subclass. You could opt for charged up and or supercharged as well to hold more stacks, but I've found that whenever I'm in danger and get shielded from the void, which is the protective light buff name, that the amount of time I'm given with the buff with only two stacks is enough time to escape whatever bad situation I'm in. You don't really need more than 10 seconds most of the time. I tend to avoid a lot of the mods that give you charge that require you to use certain special or power weapons. For example, Precisely Charged is cheap at one energy, but requires multiple rapid final blows with snipers or linear fusions. You're just probably not really doing that that much though. Blast Radius allows for grenade launcher or rocket kills to give you charge, which can happen a bit more, especially with the new special grenade launcher. Quick Charge is with shotguns or fusions, although it can also provide an additional bonus if you have another arc mod equipped. However, Precision Charge, which is definitely not really close to that other name that I just said, gives you charge with rapid precision defeats with bows, hand cannons, and scouts, something you might actually be doing, although at a bigger energy cost. Sustained Charge allows for generation of stacks via rapid auto, trace, or machine gun kills, although it costs 4 energy, and Swift Charge gives charge with pulse, sidearm, or SMG kills, but at the cost of 5 energy. Again though, just a quick thing, as I was doing testing for this video, I noticed that sometimes it, the mods just weren't working, like at all, like I said earlier. I assume that they're bugged or broken or something, but for example, Swift Charge just does not generate any charges for me with an SMG at all. I tried a bunch of things, restarting my game, different guns, mod slots, armor, blah, 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 nothing. So, yeah, it's, it's not great. Again... Whenever I make videos like this, I go into them with the assumption that everything is working properly since these videos don't get revised when something is fixed, but it is just something to keep in mind. I personally think that if you have a masterworked primary weapon, you don't really need more than taking charge. It's almost equal to two kills giving you a stack with any masterworked weapon, it's relatively cheap, and doesn't require a specific element on your armor. Not to mention, it actually works. I haven't had too many issues, if any, with me not getting charges. To go beyond this, 
we need to look at more mods. What kind of weapons you want to be using, what kind of exotics you're running, and what subclass you're using. This is why it's tough to suggest very generic builds beyond what I just did, because all of these things play a pretty big factor. For example, if you wanted a simple build that focused on making a lot of super energy, you could build something like this. Taking charge to generate stacks on stacks for double the stacks, charged up to hold three stacks, and then supercharged to hold five stacks. And then your converter would be energy converter. Throw on bad juju if you have the catalyst and it's masterworked or a masterwork weapon otherwise. Thresh is also encouraged. Get to five stacks by collecting three orbs of power, use your grenade, and instantly go to half super. Then, after you use your super, you'll probably already have five stacks and probably have your grenade again. Use your grenade immediately to get almost another half super. You could drop stacks on stacks if you're confident in generating charge by swapping it for another generator or something entirely different. This kind of build will really get rolling after you use your first super and instantly generate half super energy by throwing a grenade. Is it the best build? No. It's just meant to be a base to get you off the ground. I must clarify though, with this mod specifically, Energy Converter, once you are over 50% super energy, this mod does nothing. Which is why I say to use your charges immediately after exiting a super. It's so that you get the biggest benefit. The second half of getting your super doesn't really utilize the mods at all. This is where you might tinker and try out a different mod or two. Something like Lucent Blade, on the other hand, doesn't really require a ton of stacks because it only uses one charge per use, so you could get away with just one generator and Lucent Blade and be good to go for the most part. This gives you three more mod slots to work with, and you could do whatever you wanted here. The Arc mods are based on melee and aggression, and also come with some hefty stat bonuses. These are probably the best of the elements. Radiant Light gives you 20 strength for 3 energy, which is already good on its own, plus its effect of charging others when you super. That could easily fit into the super energy build that I just discussed. Powerful Friends is a 20 mobility stat boost and also provides charge to teammates. Striking Light gives a good damage resistance buff when you're sprinting when you trigger the secondary effect of this mod. High cost for that one though. Heavy Handed is a very high cost, but its primary and secondary effects are very potent. Most of these mods are pretty good. The Solar Charged with Light mods are mainly based on healing and grenade effects. I don't really utilize any of these that much, although they definitely can come in handy in terms of needing an emergency heal or something like that to get out of a tight spot. Protective Light is my personal help I'm gonna die save me mod because it's automatic and provides a very strong effect. The Rocket mod gives you about a 20 to 25% damage boost on your rockets when you fire one with a charge and actually hit something. That's not too bad, but I'd maybe wait until rockets are slightly better. The Void mods, besides Protective Light, aren't the best. Extra Reserves is okay, but when we have Special Finisher, it just feels redundant, especially given how much extra you need to invest. Surprise Attack is actually very strong, you just need to be very aware of your stack usage. But, as I would like to talk about in a future video, with a damage buff like this, you're going to be doing so much overkill damage to regular targets, so make sure to utilize this on a target that will actually feel the effects by living for longer than two shots. An energy converter, as we discussed earlier, I think it's fun in a build dedicated to super energy, but it is useless after 50% super. Warmind Cell mods are a bit more straightforward because a lot of their benefits are within their own element. Arc deals with collecting Warmind Cells instead of shooting them, Solar focuses on explosive effects and massive damage, while Void is more about providing utility in the form of buffs, debuffs, suppression, and being able to move cells around. While Arc mods are very underpowered in my opinion, the Solar and Void mods are quite strong, but generally speaking, don't have a ton of potential if you try to combine them. For the most part, if you're running with Solar Warmind Cell mods, you want to use other Solar Warmind Cell mods, and that's mostly the case for Arc and Void as well. Using Arc and Solar, or Arc and Void, doesn't work because Arc mods will collect the cell but won't trigger the other elemental explosion effects. 
I would say that Global Reach is a staple mod for any sort of Warmind Cell build. The radius increase is substantial, to the point where Warmind Cells will affect entire giant rooms. Otherwise, Solar Avoid is up to you. It all depends on what your goals are. If you want to blow things up, you use Solar. If you want to suppress or provide buffs, then you use Void. Pretty much simple as that. I would skew more towards using Void in higher difficulty content since the suppression effect is very strong on one of the mods and all of the other mods like Warmind's Protection and Power of Rasputin are great for buffing yourself in an entire room. However, there is one Void mod that I think you can use with either a Solar or Void setup and that is Grasp of the Warmind. Grasp of the Warmind allows you to pick up a cell and throw it, meaning you can reposition cells that are in a bad location, or simply bring a cell that you generated with you to a new location. Most of the time, a Warmind cell build just amounts to throwing on as many or as few Warmind cell mods of a certain element as you please. If you just want global reach and that's it, that's totally fine. If you want to go fully kitted with solar mods, go for it. The reason I would refrain from trying to combine Charged with Light and Warmind Cell mods together in the same build is to not overdo things, at least until you get more familiar with them and the gameplay flow. Charged with Light is really good when you focus specifically on it, and the same goes for Warmind Cells. You could combine the generic effects of both Warmind Cells and Charged with Light. I think that's totally fine. Something like taking Charge and Higher Energy Fire from Charged with Light and then Global Reach and whatever other mods you want in one build works fine. I'm not the most keen on, for example, the mod that gives you Charge whenever you generate a Warmind Cell. You can much more reliably generate charge with taking charge, although if charged with light isn't a huge part of your build, or maybe you're fine with just that being the lone generator because you're using Lucent Blade or Protective Light or something that doesn't use a ton of charges, then that's fine too. Again, we're just trying to build a base here, something that you can get comfortable with and then expand upon once you're comfortable. That's what I have for you guys on building a build. Feel free to share your favorite build in the comments. I'm definitely very interested in seeing what you guys have to offer, especially to players who are maybe looking for a build to start messing around with. Now all we need is an in-game loadout system, so get working on that one, Bungie. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.